So we're here at PRGE with Bruce Robert Pocock and Zephyr Saul and their game Grizzards. So let's talk about Grizzards and how it's a big game. It's an RPG game. It's quite an undertaking to make that type of game on yeah. the 2600. It's so, been uh, an ordeal, yeah. So what kind of obstacles did you run into trying to make such a, a large game, especially a game that you have to save your progress? <laughs> right. Not many Atari 2600 games like allow you to continue later. That, that was sort of the, uh, the weakness and the strength was with 128 bytes of memory, not a lot. There's not a lot of room to store progress in the game and stats for your character and so forth. So we right. swap it out to the uh, the, the erase bleed prom. Okay. As you play, which is why it's always required the save key for the demos. Yep. Because there just isn't room in RAM for everything at once. So, uh, like the game is divided into three areas. Yeah. Each of the three areas: the mainland, the island, and the secret third area have their own set of game flags with their own progress. And right. as you travel around, it's swapping back and forth between them. Okay. Um, so that's quite involved. Yeah. It originally, it was going to be more involved in the, uh, the combat aspects of it. Right. And we realized that the text and the, the more roleplay elements were actually an improvement over having a more complex combat system. So, yeah. The... Uh, and, and was it a game that kind of snowballed and got bigger and bigger? Because I, I know it's like there's there's voice in it, and it needs a special kind of cartridge. In some ways, it got smaller. Oh, yeah. And uh, but, that to yeah, fit it all in. It, it started 32k, but yep. then a lot of what it expanded into is just text and speech. Okay. Uh, like a third of the uh, cartridge is just text and speech for the the different dialogue. Uh, Roleplay components. There or you are, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we real quickly determined it wasn't going to fit in 32K. But right. We kind of put a lid on it, like, okay, whatever fits in 64K <laughs> is what we're going to ship. We're not yes. going to balloon it out, make it under 28K. And, that, and that's kind of one of the limitations and strengths of the 2600. It really makes you focus on <laughs> what's important in this game. It's like, yeah. okay, I'm going to. Pick, you know, 4K, you know, 32, 64, whatever, and and you have to, you know, start from almost the beginning, knowing what your limitations are, and, and then fit it all in. Yeah, the um, this 12 character text engine was like halfway into development that we added the ability to do the 12 character text instead yeah. of the six characters of the the combat, and the uh, stats, and so forth used. Right, and that like opened up a whole. Ability. It's still trying to tell a story in like 45 bytes at a time, you know, a 9 by 5 grid of, uh, or a 12 by 5 grid of characters. Makes it challenging. Uh, yeah. Some of the story is, is ridiculous. It's a lot of rewrites and uh, condensing words and yeah. being efficient in your... Uh, T Tetrising in the text, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Oh, and also so you don't have to use long words, you have to not, you know, use dashes and go over so it doesn't look messy, I guess. There's a, there's a number of sentences that are like just missing periods right. on the screen because it was just exactly 12 characters and uh, you, you can guess where the period went, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, Out of there. Yeah. yeah. So ever did the music and uh, the, yeah. the actual illustration that inspired yeah. it. Yeah, great and looking poster. Has play tested the entire game how many times? Oh wow! And how long is the game? Say an average person playing it. How long would they be playing it to get to the end? Uh, actual, if you don't die, it's only about four to five hours. Yep. But rewinding and, and replaying parts of it, uh, it right. quickly eight hours. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah. I think Best was four, slowest was about eight. Yep, yeah. that's, a, that's a good amount of gameplay. Yeah. yeah. It'll actually give you a timer every time you save of how many hours you've been playing. Oh, really? That's um, excellent. Up to a thousand and something, and then it gives up on you, and it's just many <laughs> it's like, hours. You've taken too long. <laughs> you've played We've rolled many it hours. over. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so it's have a, you been uh, kind of hanging around watching people play it? And A little bit, yeah. Yeah, and what kind of reaction uh, have you seen? Puzzlement. Puzzlement? It's like, <laughs> yeah. Is what it, is this? Are they not uh, sure what what exactly they're seeing? And I, I it's like, that's, this isn't a shooter. I don't understand what I'm playing. Right. Yeah, it's the not crossover a, between system and genre is just, uh, it yeah. definitely provides uh, something great for a certain niche audience. Yes, because you wouldn't, you really wouldn't expect a game like this on the 2600. Yeah, there's RPG type games, there's not that many. There's a handful, three but not or four, that many. maybe. Yeah, yeah I like, think we own all of them. Yeah, yeah. from, from and, Adventure, Tanguna. Uh, yeah, great ones. Uh, and Alt is coming out. That's a very expansive one. Yeah, but you're amongst a very small elite handful of them <laughs> because it is very difficult to make an RPG on the 2600, like with all the limitations that you were saying before. So yeah. I bet it was quite a challenge. We actually, uh, I actually started over 10 years ago oh. doing a project with someone else on the Atari Age boards and my house burned down. Oh my God. And that threw everything out oh. the window. And it was a good decade before I came back around. I'm like, you know what? I have the time. Yeah. There's a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's been a re reoccurring theme amongst the developers. It's like, I've got a lot of time right now. <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, let's... Hence all the games that are coming out at PRG this year. Yeah, it, it was originally not going to be like a monster collecting thing 10 yep. years ago. It was going to be more of a traditional turn-based RPG. Yep. And this evolved over the first few months. Uh, I think you, your first uh, demo on the show was yeah. one of the alpha versions. That, Fairly early, yeah. yeah. Uh, I also said he's packing the cards in with the games that have the support email address. Oh, that's, that is very important, I think, with, especially with such a complex game. People might have questions beyond the manual. Yeah, the 20-odd <laughs> page manual. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess there's things that are not in the manual that are surprises, like certain monsters. Uh, right. The, the manual covers, like, the first uh, 15 or 16 creatures, and the map is more detailed in the first area of the game. Yeah. Less detailed in the second area, Port Lion. And the third area, we've kind of kept under wraps what it even is. That's um, great. You need surprises. The boss characters are... The mystery to be solved is, yeah, yeah. who is the boss of the monsters? Uh, how, why are they attacking now? So right. Forth. Yeah. The main big story, right? Yeah. It unfolds as you go, and that's that's the advantage of having text in the game. And there's not too many game uh, twenty six hundred games that employ yeah. a lot of text. So you have to really rely on what you see with a lot of games, and uh, and and the manual and the visuals of the manual. So yeah, we did that must have been very helpful to have the text. In where you have to have the manual open to figure out what's happening. But. Yeah, and you don't want uh, to repeat that uh, fiasco where people are just baffled by the game, and they really need the manual, and people getting it secondhand, going, "I don't know what's going on. Yeah. I fall in the pits and I die. And it's a sad <laughs> game." Yeah. Yeah, so I'm really exactly. looking forward to playing it on the show. I don't know how I'm going to manage to fit such a huge game on the show. It's going to be like an After Dark marathon at some point. That would be fantastic. Yeah, that would be great. but I'm looking forward to playing through it. It's Yeah, we, we apologize to Al for, uh, we figured the speech loop here on the attraction because we're driving crazy. It turns out not a problem. Not a problem at all. <laughs> at all. We can barely hear each other right now. <laughs> but it's ridiculously talkative. Um, yeah. Which, yeah, sorry about that on your show. Oh, that's fine. We know what we're in for now. Lots of talking with Grizzards. Lots of talking. Yeah, well, it was great uh, talking with you about your game. Great and, to meet you uh, all. Great to meet you as well. Great to meet you as well. And looking forward to playing it on the show again. Right. Thank you. So thank you.